Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. This is your ultimate guide to Outbreak, running through basically everything you need to know to go from zero to hero, from world tier one to, in theory, world tier 10 and beyond. Now, there are a lot of ways that I could have made this video, but I think the most useful will be if I do it as if you're kind of watching it along in your own game. So we'll start off world tier one with the very basics and then work our way through as things get more intense. When you initially spawn in, I recommend the first thing you do is check your your map and this can be done on ps5 by pressing the touchpad to pull it up if you just see the scoreboard hit r1 and it'll tab you over to the map now i know there are a lot of symbols noted here but don't worry i'm going to be breaking down each one in turn the first and probably most important is this star this is an indicator for your main objective which will be one of at launch six different challenges it's only through completing that main challenge that you'll be able to move on to the next region so once you're ready to get out of this world and get to the next world tier, that's the objective that you want to complete. However, in order to make sure you're powered up enough for it and things like that, there's a whole load of other stuff to explore. So let's talk about some of these other symbols and I'll talk about them in the context of being on world tier one. And then later in the video, I'll readdress certain things that you can do at later world tiers that make more sense at that point in your game. This question mark in a kind of perk icon just here is, surprise, surprise, the Wonder Fizz machine. And you can also find a Pack-a-Punch indicated by this symbol as well. Now, the pap will sometimes have a little arrow next to it, and that indicates that it's on a different level of verticality to you. So it's either above you or below you. You may need to go upstairs in a building, for instance, in order to find it. There is this symbol, which indicates a mystery box, which you can use for the regular number of points, 950. And just like a regular zombies map, you've also got crafting benches indicated by these symbols and armor stations indicated by this little shield symbol with a gun next to it. There are also ammo crates basically all over the map, but these aren't indicated on your main map, just on your mini map. So if you need ammo, it works exactly like regular zombies. You can go and buy some. This is all great. Like these symbols are all very easily recognized. What should you do first? Well, I want to make it clear to you guys that points are going to be earned more slowly in Outbreak than they are in regular zombies. You're going to be getting between 25 and 35 points roughly for each kill. And as such, you are going to take longer in order to get yourself the point threshold that you need for Pack-a-Punch or to spin the box a load of times or to get your full perk load out and things like that. As a result, my recommendation is in World Tier 1, you don't pack right away. You don't make that your instant goal and you're patient and you don't try and get a complete perk load out right away as well. Instead, in my opinion, the thing that makes the most sense to do is to do some side quest activities to build up points and then you can buy a few upgrades for yourself, but not too many before getting to that main objective in World Tier 1. And it's only after World Tier 1 that I would recommend really starting to invest in a lot of your setup. So let's take a look at one of those side quests. This one is a really cool one. It's a dragon symbol on your map. And when you get to it in game, it's going to look like a little rocket ship, which you can activate on the front where there's a little control panel. Doing this is going to spawn in a dragon head and a circle of fire on the floor in front of you. You need to kill zombies that are inside that ring of fire and you'll be able to tell if they're ready to be killed because they'll have a purple glow of ethereum on their chest. For each zombie you kill, the dragon will suck it up into the air and start eating and it doesn't work like Derizon where you have to wait for it to be finished eating before you get the next kill. Nope, you can just keep on feeding this thing with as many zombies as you have in the circle at a time and as you do this, you'll see the tanks on either side of the dragon head starting to fill up. When you've killed enough zombies in the circle, the dragon will will show you a little smiley face on the console, the rocket will blast off into the sky, and underneath you will be rewarded with a crate. This crate will have higher rarity rewards typically than other crates that you can find around the world that I'll talk about a little later. And so I think it's really worth doing these optional objectives early in your game. It's going to set you up a lot more quickly because you can get perks from this thing. You could get a gold weapon potentially. It's unlikely at World Tier 1, but it is possible. So I would definitely say that these are worth doing to kick things off. Now, I mentioned more crates a moment ago. What am I talking about there? Well, around the map, these aren't objectives. These are just bonuses that you can find. You may notice that you start hearing a kind of weird chuckling noise, and this will be accompanied by a little jingle. 
this indicates that there is a crate nearby that you can run over to. And once again, these can have great rewards in them, but they're less likely to have the crazy good rewards, both at this world tier, because your rewards are going to get better as you go later into your game. And they're going to be less rare compared to the rewards from those actual main side quests. However, they are going to give you a load of salvage quite often. And that's going to be really useful because you're going to really need armor as you start going up those world tiers. So it's not like you should ignore those crates entirely because they're not going to maximize your entire loadout on round one. I just want to make sure that I set kind of good expectations for you. The next side quest we'll talk about is a kind of takedown style side quest where you'll see three skulls indicated on your map. And if you run over there, there'll be a dead soldier with a radio. You need to interact with the radio to start the side quest. And after about 15 to 20 seconds, somewhere around you, zombies and mini bosses will be beamed in from the sky for you to kill. However, they won't always beam directly on top of you. Sometimes it'll be a little in the distance. So look across the horizon sort of thing, see where the beam is and then run over there and there'll be a big group of enemies. This objective isn't going to give you a crate or anything like that. It's going to give you your rewards via the enemies that you're taking down. And of course, you'll be getting points here as well. So if you need a couple of extra points in order to get Pack-a-Punch, for instance, then this can be a really useful challenge to do. There's another side quest, actually, that is fairly similar, except instead of beaming enemies down somewhere else, you basically beam them on top of yourself by activating a crate. And this one is indicated on the map by a cloud with a lightning bolt, which is hitting a crate. You'll want to run over to it and you'll see a crate that's ready to be activated, except when you hold square, it's going to channel the energy of the dark ether and spawn in a load of zombies around you you and you need to take all of these down and it's only once all of them are dead that the crate will go from being red to gold and you'll be able to open it up. If it's still red for you and it looks like everything's dead, just look around in that area. You should be able to find that last zombie that's probably stopping you from opening it and then you can get your reward. Now, seeing as we're talking about side quests that spawn in enemies and mini bosses especially as well, we should probably talk about what those mini bosses are and how best to get rid of them. The Megaton you'll be familiar with from D Machine and it's weak to electric damage. When you kill it, it will split in two and you'll then need to take down both Megaton Blasters, which will be able to move faster than the Megaton and are just generally a bit annoying. There's also the Mayak from D-Machine, except he's got all sorts of different names now and he's a bit more powerful than the Megaton. Manglers from Firebase Z have returned. You're going to want to shoot these guys in the arm to take them down, the cannon arm and also use Blast Furnace, the ammo mod. That's going to be super effective. The Mimics from Firebase Z are in the map and they're weak to poison damage, so you'll want the Brain Rot alternate ammo type. And you also have some new enemies too, such as the Panzer, as you can see here, which you're going to probably want to use Shatter Blast on, the new alternate ammo type, which does explosive damage and is great against armor. The Panzer will jump into the air, land, fire breathe, chuck grenades at you. It can be pretty tricky to take down. So if you see one of these in the distance, make sure you have considered your options before you just charge straight ahead and engage with it. There's also a new enemy type called the Tempest, which sort of works like the Avogadro from previous zombies games, it's basically a dark ether kind of figure that's going to shoot you with dark ether energy. And you can dodge that dark ether energy, but the Tempest will start warping around you to make it a little more tricky for you to take it down. They also have the ability to entirely disable any vehicles. And this includes vehicles that you're going to be needing for objectives, which we'll talk about in a moment. So these can be really, really annoying. I recommend you focus fire them to get rid of them as you're entering an encounter. That mostly covers it for the enemies that you're going to be encountering. Now let's talk actually about some of the side quest objectives that don't require you to fight any enemies whatsoever. For example, this symbol that you'll have seen on your map probably a bunch of times is a jump pad, which is going to cost 500 points to activate and is going to propel you really high into the air, at which point you can press X to pull out your parachute and float gracefully back to the ground. Now, this isn't just a way to get around the map faster. As much as it's fast, fantastic for that and you should utilize it for that purpose. It's also absolutely essential if you want to farm points quickly in your game. You see, when you get flung up into the air and you pull your parachute out, in the distance you should be able to see some essence canisters, which are just points. That's what the points currency is called in Cold War. And you can float through those to get 500 points apiece. It means that assuming you get a couple of them, you'll get back everything you spent on the jump in the first place. So it's essentially free fast travel 
and you can make money from doing this as you go to your next objective. There are, of course, small essence canisters that are all over the map that you can find if you're searching around for crates, for instance, and there are large ones too that are going to give you a higher reward. And those are great, don't get me wrong, but these jump pad ones are always going to be there. They're indicated really clearly as you fly, and so I think this is a really worthwhile thing to bear in mind in your strategy for navigating around the world. You may also at some point run into this symbol on your minimap, which looks like a kind of disc of some kind. This is a dark ether orb, which is kind of similar to a Gersh ball from previous zombies experiences. If you find it, run over to it and start shooting it, and you'll see that a load of points will start spewing out. You need to grab all those points, obviously, and then chase the ball to its next location because it's going to start moving and leave a very faint trail for you to follow. When it stops moving, shoot it a load again, you'll get a load more points, and then it will move to a third and final location. When you get there, shoot it a bunch, and it will then disappear, giving you a massive shower of points and potentially some rare weapons, and it can also give you perks. The next thing I should mention is to reiterate that the trials machine is really worth hitting up as well. That can be found via this radio symbol on your map. And when you go over to it, it's going to initially cost 500 points to activate a trial. It will last five minutes, which is a lot longer than it does in regular zombies. And it gives you plenty of opportunity to work your way up to a legendary reward. Now, you don't have to go for legendary. You can always cash it in earlier. There's nothing wrong with that. And once you have a reward available, the symbol on your map will go from being where there was a radio previously to being a present. So that's how you know that you can go and pick something up. It'll also be indicated on the left hand side of your screen. Typically from a legendary reward, you could get a legendary weapon or you'll get a purple gun that is already pack a punched once. And you'll also get things like a load of drops, power up, stuff like that, as well as a bunch of salvage. So if you think about it, ignoring the power up, ignoring the salvage, just focusing on the weapon itself that you're going to get from this, you might be spending as little as a thousand points and a bit of your time to get yourself a purple tier already pack a punched gun or better. So it's a no brainer in my opinion, getting that trials machine started on World Tier 1 is a great idea. So you now have an understanding of how all the side questy things work. What's the best order of operations? Well, I think hitting the trials machine pretty much straight away is a good idea, and also using a jump pad early in your game in order to get some starting points is a great one too. This way, the trial will either be relevant to a side quest, which we can go and do right away because we know where it is on the map, or you can roam around, kill some zombies, and just work towards whatever trial objective you have, and then maybe start another trial afterwards if you feel so inclined, or just go and do a side quest. At that point, you'll have a little bit of a points buffer, and if you really want to, you can can spin the box, but personally, I would not recommend it. Instead, normally, I would be more focused on trying to earn salvage so I can get myself my first armor tier, and then starting to think about doing that first objective with just my base loadout weapon. If you're a less confident player, then you can absolutely earn more points and go and pack a punch before you do this, but for most players, I think that doing this with your loadout gun should be okay. You could, of course, pick up a starting perk like Jug or Quick if you need an extra buffer for your health, or you could pick up something like Deadshot if you want to do more damage. So you're probably wondering, how do you actually get the wonder weapons? And it's pretty simple. You can do the trials just like you can in regular zombies maps, and those can give you those legendary rewards. You can also get them out of the crates that are around the maps. And if you get a bigger crate, so there are small, medium, and large sizes, you're more likely to get a better reward. So here's a clip of me, for example, getting the Reiki out of a large crate. But if you get a gold crate, that's going to have even more rarity. And those are the sorts of things that you're going to be able to get from for instance, these side quests that you're going to be doing throughout your run. You'll also find that later in your games, you'll have a much higher chance of getting legendary weapons. And if you've ever got a Megaton in the game or a Mayak, I really think it's a worthwhile deviation from whatever route you're on to go and take it down because those things have pretty high drop rates for the legendary weapons as well. Highly recommend those. You can, of course, use the mystery box if you want, but in my opinion, the box is unreliable. I prefer those other methods, just sort of playing the game and then getting it from keeping playing the game seems to work quite well for me. When you're done exploring and finished up with your side quests, you're ready to move on to the main objective in your region, indicated, like I said before, by the star on your map. At launch, there are six different objectives that could be given to you here. I'll explain all six of them now so you have a comprehensive understanding of exactly how to do all of them, and then we'll talk about what it's like to be on the higher world tiers and how those experiences in those challenges change. Let's start with Escort. When you activate this by holding square on the little control panel, it will spawn in a rover and you need to stay near to the rover in order for it to move. There'll be a portal somewhere quite close to you on the map, maybe a couple of hundred meters away, that the rover will trundle towards and 
you need to fight off any zombies that are attacking the rover or yourself while it makes its way there. As it reaches that portal, it will do a little bit of an experiment looking thing, maybe go in the portal, and then it will be flung to a new location and you need to run over there and then escort it again. The process at this point repeats, you walk with it to the portal, it will then get flung one more time, and this time you walk with it to a final portal where there'll be a big wave of enemies, so be careful, maybe consider using some equipment here, maybe a score streak if it's really crazy. And once you've cleared the enemies and the rover has gone into the portal, it will disappear and it will be objective complete. At this point, an anomaly will be marked somewhere on your map and that's how you get to the next region. But to avoid skipping ahead here, let's talk about those other five possible challenge types first. Next, we have Holdout. This one's going to be marked by a massive purple ethereum crystal. And when you go and activate it, it's going to teleport you into an enclosed space, some kind of building. You'll then have a timer on the left-hand side of your screen and you'll need to survive for that amount of time before being teleported back to the main region you were just in. And of course, to make your life difficult, a load of mini-bosses and zombies will be spawning in to make sure that you don't get a free lunch here. It can get a little cramped in there, but if in your game you get yourself a Reike, it can be absolutely phenomenal for this challenge, especially if you're in co-op. This is because the alt fire on the Reike slows things down, zombies and mini-bosses alike. And so, so if you get in one of the sort of side rooms and have someone holding a doorway with a Reike, for instance, you should be able to slow a lot of the oncoming horde and it will just make things a lot easier because then one person can watch a window, for instance, and the other person can just be focused on the much more slow group coming in from the main area. I'd also say do not be afraid to use your field upgrades here. Remember, these ending challenges are the last things you need to do in each region. You're going to spawn into the next region and have an opportunity, if you want, to just get a couple of zombies kills to recharge those meters. So use all of that stuff if you need to in order to survive. Objective number three is eliminate, which when activated is going to spawn in a high value target, also known as an HVT. Sort of like the escort, it's going to be split across three stages, except it's just stages of the boss's health bar. So once you get that first third of its health down, it will fly through the air to a new location and you'll then be able to get the second third of its health down and then it'll fly again and you'll be able to finally take it down in that third spot. There is a trick to make your life easier when you're doing this, though. You don't just need to focus on raw firepower. You see, the boss itself is the main focus, but there are going to be a load of zombies and things like that around you, making your life more difficult. However, if you're able to just beam the boss itself down, all of those zombies will despawn as soon as you hit the kind of health checkpoint and the boss starts flying through the air. You do not need to kill absolutely all of them before you start doing boss damage, and so you may find that you can be sneaky, creep up on the boss potentially when it initially spawns in and absolutely shrek it. And before the zombies around you even really have a chance to start attacking you, you'll find that they all just die and the boss will move to its next spot. However, you can also, of course, just try and take down a lot of the zombies before you focus the boss if you feel that that would be a safer option for your circumstances in your game. Next, we have retrieve. And I think this is probably the trickiest one. If you have this in your game, you're going to want to be very tactical about the way you do it. When you start the objective, a timer on the left hand side of your screen is going to begin and two points of interest will be marked A and B. You need to run over to these locations and hold square to purge. And then after a few seconds, you'll be able to pick up a canister. If you're carrying the canister, you won't be able to jump or sprint. It's going to slow you down quite a lot, but you will have your field upgrade switched over to a new, more powerful upgrade, which basically gives you a short range nuke and it's going to get recharged from just a few kills. Like five or six kills will give you a completely fresh charge of it and you'll be able to use it once again. Holding the canister, you need to walk it back to the original location where you started this objective and hold square for a couple of seconds to put it into the device. Now, as you can imagine, this can get pretty overwhelming pretty quickly because you're so slow. So doing things like making sure you've got monkeys in your inventory before you start this objective might be a really good idea. And also making sure potentially that there's a vehicle nearby so you can zip around a bit more easily. Once you've done the first canister, you'll need to go and purge a second and then carry that back to the original device. And once you've inputted that second canister, the objective will be completed and you'll be able to move on. Next up, we have Defend. This one is pretty self-explanatory to be honest. You activate it and then it's going to give you a timer on the left-hand side and a health bar on the left-hand side. 
you have to protect this little panel here from all the zombies that will be surging towards you, it's going to get pretty crazy. So this is another one where anything with AOE, like wave clear type uses, like C4s, for example, is going to be extremely useful. And if you've got stuff like monkeys, it can be handy as well. Also, if the health bar starts getting really low, it can be useful here if someone in your game uses Frenzied Guard, because as you activate Frenzied Guard, it's going to cause all zombies to run away from the panel and towards you instead. And so you can basically just entirely take the pressure off and take the zombies down while you're at it too. We're now at the point where we've covered all those main objectives. And so we can talk about what happens directly afterwards. When you finish your objective, an anomaly will spawn in somewhere on the map and you need to run over to it and hold square to spawn in a beacon. This will also spawn in a pack-a-punch machine, crafting table, armor station, and wonder fizz machine. You can use these machines if you want to, and you probably will have some points from doing that objective. So go ahead and do that. And when you're ready to start moving forward, you've got a choice at the beacon. You can either exfil, which will route you to a certain location on the map, and you'll have to clear zombies out just like you have done in D Machine and Firebase Z. Or you can choose to warp, which is going to continue your game and move you into a new region, which is basically the same as just loading you into an entirely new map. If you choose to warp, that new region will be at a higher world tier, and that is the counter in the top right hand corner of your screen. It's not rounds anymore, it's these world tiers, and they get progressively more difficult as you go, but the rewards get better as you go as well. So let's say you choose to warp, and then you go through the same process in that new region of doing side quests, getting geared up, and then doing a main challenge at the end, and getting another beacon. The rewards will start out as just raw Ethereum crystals, but then you'll get refined Ethereum crystals, and eventually you'll get flawless ones as well. And if you get to the really high world tiers, you can get multiple flawless Ethereum crystals from completing the objective in that region, and then you can just move on once again and do it all over again and get even more. These new crystals, refined and flawless, are used for tier 4 and 5 upgrades respectively in your skill trees, and while it's expensive to get them unlocked, you need 5 flawless to get tier 5, for example, it's totally worth it because some of them are so powerful. Not all of us can just keep playing this forever though, and so if you want to give yourself a nice little bonus at the end of your run, exfilling is a good idea. I want to give you a word of warning though, because what can happen if you're not careful is you can get an area of the map that you need to clear zombies from, and then if more zombies keep running in from the outside, that can actually cause your counter to start going up instead of down. It happened to me in my game. Be careful if this does happen. You might need to use your score streaks, etc., to just make sure that everything is dead in that area, and you'll then be able to board the chopper just like you would in D-Machine or Firebase Z. In my mind, if you're a fairly new player or someone a little bit less experienced, trying to get to World Tier 4 and then exfilling there is a really good idea. It's going to be a challenge, don't get me wrong, but I think it's a good target to set for yourself. If you're a more experienced player, I really suggest you just push through and go as far as you can because you may find that you surprise yourself with how far you can get. And remember as well, early on, the more experience you have doing all these challenges will mean the, the faster you can farm in the future. So you don't need to necessarily exfil and be really cautious early on in the kind of lifetime of the outbreak mode. You might as well push the boundaries a bit. So believe in yourself. Try and go for those high world tiers. I also should probably make it clear that you don't only get your rewards if you exfil. Like you can do a load of world tiers and get the rewards and have it pop up on screen and then die or fail a main objective in one of the world tiers late on, like let's say world tier seven, and you'll still get all the rewards that you earned previously. You keep all those. It's not like the division dark zone or something where you only keep what you extract with. Thankfully, your rewards will be saved. So if you are an experienced player and you are pushing those high rounds, what's the best way to do it? Well, you're going to get to the point where pretty much any regular weapon, triple pack a punched with alternate ammo types and just everything upgraded in your arsenal is still not going to be enough. I hate to say it, but the zombies get really strong in this mode and taking down all those variety of different bosses can be really difficult. And that's why I was saying like do trials and side quests early in your game as much as possible because you're going to build up a bigger points buffer earlier in your game and a bigger salvage buffer to get tier three armor faster. You're going to get more chances to get wonder weapons like the die shockwave, the ray gun, or the ray K, and you'll get free perks, which means that you can save that money and spend it on upgrading your weapons instead. Now, of the wonder weapons that are currently available in the mode, I would say that the die shockwave is the least useful by quite a long way, actually, and the ray gun and ray K are kind of tied in my mind, but they have different use cases. The ray gun has seriously good firepower. I can't deny that, but the slow effect of the alt fire of the ray K is extremely useful utility, and so if you're playing co-op, 
up. And like I said before about the holdout step, you need to make sure that zombies aren't going to all flood into one area and take you down and overwhelm you super quickly. Then that slow can be life changing. That isn't to say, by the way, that the Reike's regular fire is bad by any means. It's fantastic. And the Reike and Raygun will both do a great job of doing things like taking down at Tempests, which can be a really pesky enemy to try and take down if you're using a regular weapon. It ends up being pretty much pointless trying to match alternate ammo types to the enemy that you're fighting because there are just too many of them. Like you'll need poison and then you'll need fire and then you'll need electricity and it's just overwhelming. And that's why just defaulting to a super powerful wonder weapon is ultimately probably where you want to be. I will say though that the Hauer is just incredibly powerful in this game. It's so stupidly OP. I've got a weapon loadout guide for it on my channel and it's just incredibly strong. So that is a potential alternative, but bear in mind if you're using a shotgun, you're not going to have range and that can in certain circumstances be a bit of a handicap, just a little bit. I think that probably wraps everything up for now. So if you want to see more guys like this on my channel or you want to try the Outbreak main quest launching in Season 3, then there'll be a link to that on the screen right now that you can click and linked in the description down below. If it's not out yet, then subscribe like right now. That would be amazing. Just hit the sub button. That'd be really cool. And I'll see you no doubt in my next Zombies video. Thanks guys. Bye for now.